I apologize. I just got to my notes and realized that I cut that last uh, video short. This is a continuation of section 13.7, factor in GCF. Uh, we have just a couple more stem and leaf plots to look at here. It won't take long, just a couple minutes. Um, what they're going to show you is back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots. That's what we have in the notes here. Um, I want you to be able to interpret this. Here's your stem right here in the middle. You can kind of highlight your stem or something, or you can just show, hey, right there is my stem. The leaves come out for women and they come out for men. This is the ages of the gymnasts in a recent Olympics. And then if we look at the key, it shows us here's our stem. And the age of the man listed this way is 21. The age of the woman listed this way is 25. So from that table, I'd like you to simply list those ages that you see for the men. It would be nothing in the teens. Then we have 21, 21, 23, 24, 27, and 30. Just so you know how to read one. For the women, we do have a lot of teenage women. Uh, for the women, the age listing would be 16, 16, 18, 18, 25, and 26. Okay. Now it says make a back to back stem and leaf plot of the 2005 Olympic gymnast ages for men and for women. Okay, so now we need to get our stem. We'll write women. We'll keep it the same as theirs was. And men. Now their stem went, went down or up in order as it goes down. So we'll go with one two, three as well. Okay, now in the 2005 Olympics for the gymnasts, we have 31 for the men, 20, 20, 21, 22, and 26. So 20, 21, 22, and 26. Again, we don't have men in that teenage range. Some of you may have an idea of why. I'd be curious what you think. On the women, we have 15, 15, 17, 18. So we'll do 15, 15, 17, 18. That removes all of those. 24, 25, and 28. 24, 25, and 28. Again, we don't have any women in the 30s. I'd be curious what you guys think of that, too. Okay, now we're down to frequency tables and making a histogram. Histogram is just like a bar graph, but it's connected. It's a bar graph of intervals, is what I like to think of it as. Bar graph of intervals. So there's no space between the um, bars. So when we look at our data here, it says fill in the frequency table. Well, we have $4, $4. That would be two sandwiches in the $4 range. $4.25 would be between $4 and $4.49. $4.50 is actually up here at the next level where it says $4.50. in that level as well. $4.25 comes back down to this lower level. $5.95 would be clear up here at the high, at the greatest level, not highest because that table uh, is written the way it is. Uh, $5 would be in this third bracket. $5.50 in the uh, greatest value. $5.50 again in the greatest value. And $5.75 again in the greatest value. Okay. Now to make a histogram, first off I just say split it up so that your different sections are about equal. You won't have any spaces between your bars. And go ahead and write your different uh, categories in here. I usually write sideways so that I don't run out of the category. First one is 4, 
dollars to 449 then 450 to 499 then five dollars to 549 and 550 to 599 okay now we turn it this way and since it is a frequency table with just simply the numbers of items, then um, I would write down here cost and over here number of sandwiches and just put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so a couple things that you want to be aware of is on a histogram you don't need to put a break in there. The first interval is the first interval. You don't have to have a break on those. Now from 4 to 449 we had four sandwiches. So we'd come up to the 4 and fill in that entire column to show that there's four sandwiches. On the next column we only had two so we'd come at 2 and draw a bar to that height. On 5 to 549 we only had one. And from 550 to 599 we had four again. So we'd come back up on that one. That's how we make frequency tables and histograms. Very easy to read once you know how they work. So we'll see you tomorrow in class. Sorry for cutting that short.